Hello, this is the section 5.1a lesson. Section 5.1 is on the topic of multiplying fractions. And we're going to break this section up into two parts, A and B. Over these two parts, we're going to try to answer four questions. Number one, why would we multiply fractions in the first place? Uh, number two, how do we multiply fractions? Number three, why does this method work? And then number four, when do we multiply fractions? Or stated another way, how do we know that uh, a word problem is really solved by multiplying fractions? Now in this section we're going to talk about, the, try to answer these three questions. Uh, in section 5.1b we're going to try to answer the fourth question. We're going to start off with the, refreshing our memory on a couple of definitions. First of all is the definition of a fraction. So a fraction starts off with a whole we divide that whole up into several pieces and that number of pieces becomes our denominator. And then we select several of those pieces and that number becomes our numerator, A. And so uh, a fraction is all about do, starting with the whole, breaking it up, selecting a number of pieces, the number of pieces selected over the number of pieces in the whole, that's our fraction. Second definition is the meaning of multiplication. Multiplication deals with situations where we have a number of groups. We take that times a number of items in each group and that gives us a total number of items. So we're going to use both this definition of a fraction and the meaning of multiplication a lot in this section. So our first question was why would we multiply fractions in the first place? Well, we're going to try to answer that question with some examples. Uh, this first example doesn't have anything to do with fractions, but we're going to uh, use this to help, uh, uh, we're going to build this up to the idea of multiplying fractions. So this problem says if we have three bowls, and each bowl contains two cups of water, then how much total water do we have? So let's draw a simple picture to illustrate this. Let's draw three bowls. One, two, three. And then in each one of those bowls, we're going to put two cups of water. So I'll draw a box here to represent a cup. And there's two cups and two more cups and then two cups there. Okay. So we see that we have three groups, one, two, three. And each group contains two items. In this case, an item is a cup. And so by our meaning of multiplication, we're going to take three times two. Do that arithmetic and we get six cups. And there's our answer. Okay. So we see that this problem is solved by simply multipl multiplying. And in this problem, we could think of it as though we, that we have 3 of 2. Or we do something with 3 of 2. 3 of 2. Of is a, is a key word that indicates multiplication. We're going to use that word a lot when dealing with uh, multiplication, especially involving fractions. Our next problem is very similar to the previous problem, just with slightly different numbers. If we have three bowls, and each bowl contains a half a cup of water, then how much total water do we have? So notice that it's almost identical problem, except, in, except each cup now contains, or each bowl contains only a half a cup of water, rather than two cups of water. So if we draw a picture of what's going on here, we've got one, two, three bowls of water, and uh, then in each one of those we have a half of a cup. So I'm going to draw just a real little box to represent a half of a cup. We'll have to use our imagination a little bit to, to think of this as representing half of a cup. But uh, now we see that we have three groups, one, two, three, and each group contains just a half of a cup. And so by our meaning of multiplication, we're going to take our three groups times our half of a cup and that's in each group. And then we'll do that arithmetic, comes out to be three halves of a cup. Okay. Now, in, uh, later on we'll talk about why this arithmetic works. Right now we'll just take it for granted. Uh, but we see in our picture that in this problem we're doing something with three of a half of a cup. Three of a half means we're going to multiply. Now, in our next problem, it's almost identical to the previous two problems, except that we have uh, some, except we have different numbers. So here we have a quarter of a bowl, and a bowl contains a third of a cup of water. Then how much total water do we have? 
But again, this is the exact same problem as what we just did, it's just with different numbers. And so the way we solved the previous two problems is we took our number of bowls times the number of cups. And so in this case, we're going to take a one-fourth times a one-third. And that's the arithmetic that we need to do to solve this problem. So the question is just how do we do this arithmetic? Well, first of all, let's restate our problem in a little bit slightly different terms. Uh, we want to find one-fourth of one-third of a cup of water. And this problem here is identical to the problem that we just did. It's just restated in slightly simpler terms. Each bowl contained a third of a cup, and then we, are, or, and then we have just a quarter of a bowl, so it's a quarter of, of a third of a cup of water. So let's draw a picture here uh, to, to try to figure out what this is saying. So first of all, I'm going to draw a picture of my third of a cup of water. So I'm going to start off with a box here. Now this box does not represent a bowl. This represents uh, one cup of water. And this is the hole in this fraction. The hole is equal to a cup of water. So one-third of a cup means I'm going to take that hole and I'm going to divide it up into three equal pieces and then I'm going to select one of those pieces. So that piece right there is my third of a cup of water. Oops, one-third of a cup that I start off with. Okay, And now we're going to find one-fourth of that. So that means that we're going to take this third of a cup, I'm going to take this third of a cup right here, and we're going to break that up into four pieces because that's what one-fourth means. So we're going to break this up in one, two, three. So now we've broken that up into four pieces, and now we're going to select one of those pieces. So let's select this piece right there. And so that is the piece that I'm going to select. So now the question is, well, just what fraction of a cup is that one piece? Well, we can answer that by simply extending these lines on through the entire hole like this. And so now we see that the arithmetic we did is one-fourth times one-third. And we see in the end we selected one piece, so that's going to be the, the numerator in my answer. And then my denominator is the total number of pieces in the whole. So now I can just count the number of pieces. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And so my denominator is 12. And so there's my answer. Uh, in the end, I selected 1 12th of a cup of water. Well, let's, uh, let's look at a, a slightly uh, a modified version of this picture and make some observations of it. So we wanted to find a fourth of a third of a cup of water. So we started off by drawing our hole which in this case was a cup, a whole cup of water. Okay. So then we, we drew a third of that cup. So we broke the hole up into three pieces, selected one of them, so there was our third of a cup. Now we want to find one-fourth of that. So we took that one-third and divided up into four equal pieces, and we selected one of those pieces. So this blue piece is the piece that I selected. So the question then is, well, what fraction of a cup is that one piece? So we answer that by extending these lines on up, just like we did here. And so there's our final picture. So we selected one piece, and then we need to figure out how many pieces are in the hole. Well, let's make this observation. The hole consists of four groups of three pieces. You can think of each of these columns as a group, and then each one of those groups contains three pieces. And so in my answer, my denominator, my total number of pieces in the whole, is going to be four groups of three, four times three. And then my numerator is going to be one, because I only selected one piece. And so here was the arithmetic that we wanted to do, one-fourth times one-third, and that equals our answer. Numerator is one, the denominator is four times three. If we do that arithmetic, we get one-twelfth. And so what this illustrates is that when we multiplied these fractions here on the left, um, our denominator and our answer is going to be 4 times 3, which is just the product of those denominators on the left. Now we're going to try to extend this example. So consider this problem. Find 2 thirds of 5 eighths of a cup of water. So 
So notice that this is pretty much the exact same problem as what we just did, except that we're dealing with different fractions. And so by our previous argument, we see that we're doing something with two-thirds of five-eighths. So we're going to take two-thirds times five-eighths. And so we want to do this arithmetic. So in order to solve this problem, we're going to draw a picture very similar to what we did before. I'm going to start off by drawing our hole, which in this case is a cup of water. And then we start off with five-eighths of a cup. So five-eighths means we're going to take that hole and divide it up into eight pieces. So you see we've done that here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. And then we're going to select five of them. So this green region is what we're going to select. That's our five-eighths of a cup. Now, we're going to select two-thirds of that five-eighths. So that means we're going to take this five-eighths, we're going to break it up into three pieces, one, two, three, and we're going to select two of those pieces. So that's the two-thirds of the five-eighths that we're going to select. So now the question is, well, just what fraction of a cup is that region? So we can answer that by extending these lines on up, like we do here. And so now here's the region that we're going to select. Now let's make some observations about this region right here. So first of all, the whole, this big box, we have divided it up into three groups of eight pieces. You can think of this as three columns, one, two, three columns, and each column consists of eight rows. So overall, we have three groups of eight pieces. But then what we selected, well, we only selected two columns, or two groups, and each one of those groups contains five rows, or five pieces, one, two, three, four, five. So by the meaning of multiplication, the total number of pieces here in our whole is three groups of eight, three times eight. And then the number of pieces that we selected, well, we had two groups of five, so two times five uh, pieces that we actually selected. So here is the arithmetic that we did. Our picture shows that this is going to equal two times five over three times eight. If we do that arithmetic, we get ten over twenty-four. So what this illustrates is that in order to multiply fractions, all we need to do is multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and we're all done. And drawing a picture like this illustrates why this is true. So in general, what this, uh, what this example illustrates is that in order to multiply fraction a over b times c over d, we simply multiply the, the numerators, multiply the denominators, and we're all done. So that's it for the section 5.1a lesson. Your assignment before next class period is to read section 5.1 from the textbook.